have a project and it's going to be a fun one and easy. I'm going to show you how to make um, a fiberglass or whatever this is, hollow core door, look like old barn wood. And while I'm doing it, I'll be describing what we're going to end up doing with this door in my new booth at Angels Antique and Flea Mall starting February 1st. Today is January 26 or 7th, so I need to get it done. I got to get everything done like this week. Time crunch. So I'll pull you in closer, tell you the products I'm using, and show you how I'm manipulating uh, the product to make it look like raised old barn wood. I showed you some pictures at the beginning, but here I'll throw a couple up again just to remind you the look I'm going for. So I'm wanting to create some thick texture and there are a lot of different products that you can use but we're using what is always readily available around here because of my husband's work and that is drywall mud. Now this specific drywall mud um, comes in a powder form and it, it's a 20 minute setup. It's called Durabond, Durabond 20. You have to work fast when you're working with a 20 minute <coughs> uh, I mean it does come in other time limits like I think the longest one is maybe 90 and of course you could just use regular drywall mud too but I want fast action I'll have a day to wait on a humid day for this to set up all right, so I've basically just troweled on randomly some thickness here and there. And now I'm just gonna take a teaser comb, whatever you call these kind of combs. Now these kind of create wide stripes, so you have to kind of alternate to get a finer looking grain. I don't do it everywhere. Some areas I'm doing it more, more grew deeper in some of the thicker areas than others. And then I'm taking my Venetian trowel that I have that I used to work with. You could use the drywall knife, but I like these because they have flex and I can lightly go over that a little bit or not. Drywall mud is sandable. So I can sand this down to whatever I want it to be in, uh, before we start the paint process. So let me continue working on this and I'll come back for a close up to show you what this looks like. Now, even though this store already has some uh, faux graining on it, uh, it'll it'll pick up a little bit through the paint that I'm going to be applying, but it won't a whole lot. Um, so that's why I am adding some texture to this door. I didn't do anything to the door other than clean it. This will bond to it. Now, if you had a door that had been painted with an oil or has been varnished with an oil, I don't know. Uh, you might have to prime the door first, but maybe not. <clears throat> I'd have to ask my husband about that. I'll ask him and let you know. I bought this door the other day at the uh, Habitat Restore, R-E store. You can find all kinds of neat things at the Habitat Restore. 
open this door. Ten dollars. So it, it was a perfect size for what I'm wanting to use it for in the booth. But it had part of the veneer was coming loose. And so we used some wood glue and some clamps. That was why I just took off the clamps. Also, when you're doing this, make sure with doors or cabinets, whatever you're doing, that you go, obviously, with the grain. So like these center sections are sideways. Don't really want a lot of buildup in this recessed edges here. I'm just gonna be doing kind of the raised areas. And I do need to do the sides when I'm out of stuff. So I will go mix another tiny little amount. up these sides. I mixed up a little bit more and I kind of like it a thick pasty consistency. That way it's pretty easily spreadable and it stays where you put it. Now I'm sure you could use other products to do this kind of raise stuff but drywall mud is cheap it's easy to use and if you buy the dry quantities you can just mix a little bit up as you need it uh, you could probably use like plaster of paris also but in our case pretty much always have draw on my around. This door came with uh, a door knob on it, but it's not a real, it doesn't turn. It's, you know, it's just a mounting thing for looks and for helping you pull because it's a snap top door, like a, like a closet door where you don't have call that part, not the hinge, but the other part, you know, that fits in uh, to the door frame. Anyway, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. So, I took the doorknob off. I didn't like it. It looked too modern for what I'm doing. So, um, I have something else I'm going to put on in its place, I think, if it's going to fit between the shelves that we are going to be adding. Um, so I didn't bother to sand those raised holes where the doorknob was. That'd be fine. So what am I doing with this? Well. As I mentioned in the beginning, we made the decision, or Brady said, do what you want. So I made the decision that I really, been contemplating it for a couple years, wanted to rent a booth at a huge antique store. We have just right up the road from us. It's not far from our house at all, which would make it convenient. I like going in there. You find good things and you find junk there, but I can't eat flea mall, antique mall. I don't have a lot of antiques, at least not ones that I want to give away or sell. So I've got to be on the flea market side because about if you're on the antique side, which honestly is the nicer side, uh, you have to have at least a minimum of 60% of your stuff has to be an antique. Okay. So, currently, that's not what I have. 
since we are transforming and have been transforming our house into more of a farmhouse style from what I would call more of a Tuscan, maybe European, a mixture of like French and Tuscan. So I have a lot of uh, furnishings that we're changing out from actual furniture, a couple of furniture pieces to pictures to pottery and it's just all kinds of things. And so that's what I'm going to be putting in the booth and then also the things that that I like to make like my hyper two foot pots gonna have a display for that but I have some Vicki Carroll which she is an artist she does hand painted pottery and I have some nice Vicki Carroll pottery from the series of 2000 which looks very Tuscan and I've had it that long, so I've had it for 20 years. Now, it's hard to find. And it certainly hasn't lost its value because I, I found one piece on eBay, a bowl, like a bowl I have, and they're selling it for $39. And it's a tiny bowl. I don't remember what I paid for it way back when. I don't think I would have paid that. But I need some way to display this pottery that I have. And I wanted it to kind of simulate what I the way I displayed it in my house. So I thought about this door. Or a door. And decided, hey. Couldn't we add some shelves to the door? Like five shelves. Boom, two, three, four, five. But I want it to look freestanding. So I ran up to Guess Where? Hobby Lobby. And they have uh, brackets, I guess is what you'd call them, for under shelves, things like that. They have all kinds. They have wooden ones, they have metal ones. And I wanted metal. And I found a couple. Okie dokie. So let me go clean this up and I'll be right back and show you what I bought and describe a little bit how we're gonna put this together. This is what I found at Hobby Lobby. They're just exactly what I wanted, kind of old and rusted looking. Um, they were normally $9.99, they were half off, so 10 bucks. 10 bucks for the door, 10 bucks for these. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the short end on the door. Like so. Then, that's going to help it stand up, but it could get top heavy, and I don't want to put these on the back of the door. It takes up too much room. The booth is not that big, so we will mount it and, and make sure it doesn't fall over. We're mounting it the same way we did our door in our entry that we turned into a coat rack. And all we did was use an L bracket. So the bend of the L goes in your wall and then it comes out and attaches to the top of the door. Not going anywhere. It's, you know, maybe a half inch to an inch out from the wall, depending on what size L bracket you buy. And I mean, I think it'll work just beautifully. Now for the shelves, I wanted barnwood obviously and it was the funniest thing the greatest thing we had so much fun yesterday morning um 
I looked on Facebook Marketplace and found a local person that sells a lot of barn wood. And, you know, he said serious inquiries only. Anyway, I texted and his, the wife um, said, well, he has, my husband has it out by his barn or his, by his workshop. And we made a time uh, to go over there yesterday morning. And as we were driving there, it's not far from the house. It's in Beauregard, which is like 10 minutes from here. It's where we go to church, too. And Randy said, what's this guy's name? And I told him. And he went, I know who that is. And he said his name. Uh, well, he was guessing because they only had the last name and then two initials in front of it. So, like, mine would be J.K. Brown. They had their initials and then the last name. And so, <clears throat> he said, I think I know who this is. And he knew even where he lived. So, because I was using, you know, Google Maps to, to get us there. He's like, yeah, this is who it is. He said, he's such a great guy. He has absolutely tons of barn wood. And he gave us such a good deal. In addition to that, he had one of those electric spools, a small one. And I asked him, how much you want for that? He's like, you want that? Like, yes, you can use it to set things on. And he said, I get it for free, you can have it. I mean, just, it was a great day. Anyway, the barnwood piece that we're gonna use for the shells, we're gonna cut up and make them about eight inches deep, the whole width of the door. And I'm gonna have five of them. So, that's the plan. And then you'll see how I'm going to set my uh, Vicki Carroll pottery on them. And then, you know, if that sells, then I'll put something else on the shelves. Now, I'm not gonna bother with doing the back side of the door because it's gonna be against the wall. You will never see it. That's just a waste of time. But here is a little piece of some of the barn wood that we got. Uh, this is not the one we're using for the shelves. The one we're using for the shelves, though, is like 16 feet long and 12 inches tall. We'll be cutting it down. So, Randy just bought me a piece that had the same coloring and look as the shelves for me to be able to match to. But I think if you look at the ruggedness of this wood and look at the texture that I've created, I think it's going to blend just fine. Uh, I just have to get my paint job to look like wood. So that, after this dries, we'll go on to the next step.